communication gone wrong and a serious case of revenge. Whether you choose to believe Judge Conyers died from a dangerous drug interaction or whether you choose to believe Kelly Taylor killed him, both paths lead you to the same destination. They lead you to conclude of this trial, my opposing counsel stood right here and falsely accused Dr. Hammer of causing Judge Conyers' death. But now you know you can't simply make accusations, you can't simply toss around allegations, because eventually, when you come to this courtroom, you have to prove those assertions. Now shortly, the Honorable Judge Erickson will instruct you on the law. He will tell you that the plaintiffs had to prove their case by the preponderance of the evidence. They had to prove to you two things. First, they had to prove that Dr. Hammer was negligent when he treated Judge Conyers. Second, they had to prove to you that this negligence caused Judge Conyers' death. After hearing all the witnesses, after seeing all the evidence, you now know not only did they fail to meet their burden, they didn't even come close. You met Dr. Hammer the last time. He told you about his education. He told you that for the last five years, he's dedicated his life to treating the people in our day. He has a clinic where he will treat anybody who comes in the door. On April 27, 2008, Judge Conyers came in there complaining of feeling When patients come see Dr. Hammer, they're all required to fill out one of these medical intake forms. This helps Dr. Hammer treat his patients safely. He met with Judge Conyers. Nowhere on this medical form did Judge Conyers mention that he was taking Viagra. During his meeting with Dr. Hammer, he never told Dr. Hammer that he was taking Viagra. Dr. Hammer treated him for the reason for his uh, lightheadedness, which was a sore throat, and sent him home. That was the extent of their visit. Now, opposing counsel spent a lot of time talking about the standard of care in this case. All physicians are required to exercise a reasonable standard of care when treating their patients. There's no requirement under the law that says Dr. Hammer has to be a mind reader, but opposing counsel would say that because Judge Kanye said yes here, he was supposed to conclude he was taking Viagra. That's just ridiculous. See, Dr. Hammer doesn't have to be perfect. He's not required to look for clues on the medical intake form. There's no requirement under the law that says he has to exercise perfect care. Just be reasonable. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to support their claim, they bring to you Andy Little. They say he's an expert. He's also a friend of the He's not here as an expert. He's here as a friend. His expertise is in erectile dysfunction syndrome. He's not a pathologist. He never conducted an autopsy in this case. In fact, she's never conducted an autopsy. Just simply looked at the autopsy report and disagreed. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's be clear. No one wants to stand here and say that the deceased bears the blame for their own death. But if you choose to believe that Judge Kanye did in fact die from a dangerous drug interaction, then it was Judge Kanye. Who's responsible for his own death? See, as a judge, people place their lives in Judge Kindness' hands when they come into his courtroom. Their lives depend on them being accurate, thorough, but more importantly, it depends on them telling the truth. Now, Dr. Hammer had a serious heart condition, a condition that changed his lifestyle, 
So he knew that when he went into Dr. Hammer's courtroom, his health and his life depended on him being accurate, him being fair, and him telling the truth. So when he failed to do that, when he failed to place Viagra on that medical intake form, he took his life into his own hands. That's when he failed to be compliant. Now you've also learned that Judge Kindness used to hold hands with his wife, but that they grew apart. They grew apart, they even stopped having sex. Years ago, they stopped having sex, but Judge Kindness is taking Viagra? That's important, because that means if he was taking Viagra, he didn't simply accidentally leave it off the medical intake form. He didn't simply forget to mention it. It means he kept his Viagra use from his wife, and he kept it from his doctor. Let's talk a little bit more about Judge Kindness' wife. You learned today that during the last couple of years of their marriage, Kelly Taylor, the man charged with the murder of her husband, he was consoling her. You now know she got more than compensation from Kelly Taylor. She used Kelly Taylor to get her husband out of the way. Stevie Walker told you they have been dating for the last two years. been seeing each other. And you now know Kelly Taylor was one of the last people ever seen with Judge Kindness. He was trying a case in his courtroom. Millions of dollars were on the line. Judge Kindness struck down the verdict. Kelly Taylor threatened Judge Kindness. Right here. He told Judge Kindness, you know this is wrong. I swear I'll burn you for this one. That threat summed up his intentions. It summed up his intent to get revenge. And when Judge Kindness struck down that verdict, Miss Kindness and Kelly Taylor took the law into their own hands. And with those hands, they got their revenge. They got their revenge when Kelly Taylor grabbed the trophy, and struck down on Judge Kindness' head with it, killing him. Now, you didn't have to prove murder today. This isn't a criminal court. We don't have a burden to prove murder. The burden in this case stayed with the plaintiff. It stayed right here. It's been here the entire case. It does not shift. It does not move. It's their burden to prove to you what they promised. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we also know that they haven't done that. They haven't proved anything. See, what they're trying to do is play the shell game. They promised to prove to you something, but instead of giving you proof, instead of giving you evidence, they try to move around the facts. They switch around the shell faster and faster. They don't want you to pick the shell that says Kelly Taylor killed Judge Kanye. They don't want you to pick the shell that says Dr. Hammer's not responsible. See, instead they try to distract you. They want you thinking about EDS and Viagra and Stevie Walker's past. They want you to focus on a review Stevie Walker had years ago. Because they know if they gave you the, the answers that you really need, they wouldn't be able to blame an innocent man. Ladies and gentlemen, I know a case like this is different. But at the beginning of this case, you made a promise. You promised to wait to hear all the evidence and all the testimony. Justice depends on you returning the only verdict that is supported and that's supported 